Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. Uh, this is episode number 563. Yeah, I've done a lot of these. And the topic today is do the work for love. And I'll explain what that means and why this might be important to you or somebody you know uh, in a moment. Before I do that, let, let, let me choose myself. It's been a long day, so let me, let me do that uh, first. So my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I definitely work with women who are, uh, what's the word looking for? High-performance women? No, that's not the right word. High-achieving women, that's a better word. So that's most of my audience. But if you're watching this and you're not one of those, that's okay. This might be relevant to you as well, because this is relevant to most people in relationship and out of relationship. So every day I do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And this is episode number 563, which means I've done a lot of these before. In fact, today, two years ago, was episode three. So I've come a long way since then. And yes, initially they weren't daily. Um, now they are. Okay, that's the logistics out of the way. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live first that will go onto YouTube and a podcast after that. And I'll tell you about those links at the back end. So let's jump in, shall we? Topic today, again, is do the work for love. And I mean this in the context of dating especially, but also when you're in a relationship and even when you're single. I was actually at a, a holiday party last night, which is why I did my broadcast earlier than usual. Um, and I, talk, I was talking to a friend of mine who we know each other pretty well. We are actually alumni from the same grad school, which is one of the th reasons why this conversation came up. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. And talking about just some of the men who've been asking her out and the challenges she's facing. Because frankly, there's, there's two parts in a way to the two levels to this. One of them is that the men who've been asking her out haven't put much effort in. They've basically been very casual about it, just like they show up, they see her, they go, oh, she's cute, they're gonna sit and talk for two minutes and like, let's get together. Without much preamble or structure involved, and it's really not the most, um, it's not romantic. <laughs> and in a lot of ways, well, the way it simply says, it leaves her cold, because there's no desire to meet up with somebody because they just said, hi, how are you doing, let's get together. That was kind of basic it was. So that's one part. The second part though, is, when she, in the context she was talking about with some of the guys she went out with, and women have this challenge as well as men do, so it's not just one side or the other. It seemed like the men she was going out with hadn't even done any work on themselves to be more um, responsible in relationship. Let me use that term carefully because this, um, this conundrum, shall we say, is the challenge of people, is the challenge for people like myself and other people who've been on the personal growth journey for a while, maybe for a month, maybe for a year, maybe for a decade, or maybe for life. And I mentioned that this woman and I both had come from the same, gone through the same grad school. And the grad school I went through, or we went, went through, went to, is not like other grad schools. It's actually more of a personal growth centric journey because it's about self facilitating, self healing, self counseling. It's a psychology program with a spiritual approach and it's very contextual about how to live life more effectively. So it's not so much about learning about psychological theory and people's issues and the DSM-5 or whatever and all that sort of stuff, but no. It was about learning how to take those skills and apply them into our lives, as well as with each other, and to apply it to ourselves. And that's a two-year program. So at the end of the two years, we had some pretty good skills and we practiced these a lot through the two years. Unfortunately, that puts us in a very interesting position which is when we date somebody, and I'm using a we because I'm talking about alumni from the school, when we date somebody who hasn't done any sort of, I mean, using the term personal growth work, but I mean any evolution, anything beyond just life. For some people, life is less than enough, so I'm gonna be careful how I talk about that too, and I'll, I'll, get some, some more, I'll give some more comparison in a moment. But when we date, when we date someone, and, all right, let me, sorry, let me make this personal for me. When I date somebody who hasn't done any sort of Self-reflection, that's a better term to use. Um, Self-growth in terms of they've learnt that there's some stuff they want to work on and they do the work themselves, whether it's with a therapist or a, a seminar or a book or just simply working with a friend who happens to be better than them at seeing them sort of thing. Usually, usually other people see ourselves, us better than we see ourselves. Can be helpful. That's a, that's a, that's a big secret, by the way. <laughs> you can get a lot of feedback from people you trust because they see you better than you see yourself and oftentimes better than you see yourself. 
So this paradigm of being immersed in teachings and understandings and transformations that changed our lives, sorry, let me, let me own it again, that changed my life to a large degree, meant that when I go on dates with women who have never experienced something like that and have had a very, um, let's just say, externally oriented life, that's probably a safe way of putting it, there's a definite disconnect and a definite uh, disparity between us. I'm not going to say which is right or wrong because it's not about that. It's about different experiences that don't fit. And so, I'm watching where I am with the title. I need to start change, change of direction. I'm intending to stay true to the title, but I'm also noticing I'm going off track a little bit because let me do this part first. So we, those of us who've been through seminars, teachings, retreats, trainings, education of a personal evolutionary format and have done a lot of self-reflection and, and done the work on ourselves so they're no longer the people we were five, ten years ago. We want to ch we choose, we'd like to be in a relationship with people who've done the same thing. Not necessarily the same programs, but the same evolution, the same journey, the same self-reflection, meaning that they are also aware, self-aware, responsible for their feelings, able to communicate clearly, perhaps have an higher, e a higher EQ, emotional quotient, not IQ, EQ, such as emotional uh, maturity, because a lot of people don't have emotional maturity, let's be, be clear about that. So for, for, those, for people when there's that disparity, that difference there, it can be very hard to date. I gotta say this, all right. And I was talking to um, somebody else about this the other day, about the challenge with being on this journey of growth is that if you imagine that the, the whole population of the, of the world is the base of a pyramid, and I'm using this not to say, and again, this is not comparison, not right, wrong, not better or worse, this is what the difference is as people tend to grow through, maybe through tragedy, through trauma, it might be through just expansion and growth, it might be through plant medicine for that matter, as well as from all the things I listed before, seminars, books, etc. As people go through the journey, they start to rise up this, this pyramid. Now I'm using a pyramid as a model because what happens is the more you raise up the pyramid, the smaller the, the population gets. And so what happens is when you've done a lot of the personal growth work, and I've been on this path for over 30 years, doesn't make me special, just different, qualify that, is that those of us who've been in this journey for a while and done a lot of work have moved up higher and higher up the pyramid because pyramids tend to get narrower at the top. The higher up we get, the smaller and smaller the cross section is. The smaller, the smaller and smaller the cross section of the population is, that relates to each other. So the further along this journey we get, the less dateable people they're going to be if we choose to date people at the same level as us. Now, this is making sense. So for my friend and I, because we're both been through the same grad school, and in fact, several people in that group were from, had also been through the grad school or other seminars, we could actually articulate and communicate. And it was actually kind of fun. But realizing that out in the wild world, as it were, as it were, it can be a little bit challenging because people, uh, how can I say this? There are people out there, not you, but there are people out there who spend their life blaming other people for everything and blaming them, blaming other people for the problems they have versus doing their own, their own work. Again, not you, but somebody you might know. The challenge with that is it's hard to sit by and do nothing. And it's certainly not easy to sit and take the blame because they're throwing it on you or me. Let me take that back. For not being... Um, I say this, not being a compatible, uh, accountable to their own word. In fact, they're living in a place of victimhood and blaming and being codependent. It's challenging to be around those sort of people as friends or in a relationship. So, so I've still got my eye on the title and I haven't come back to it yet. I may, I may end up changing the title because it feels different now. So what, what I guess I'm saying, uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> what I'm saying is do what I've done and become part of the minority. That's not what I'm trying to say here. But definitely be aware that if you're going to grow and learn, you're coming out from amongst the, the forest of people who don't do this sort of stuff, just to be clear. So that may be a warning for some of you. Um, and, it may be ex and it may be exciting for other people going like, great, I want to be free of that. I want to grow into a new level, a new place in my life. Wonderful. But it does reduce the dating pool. That's just simply the way it is. And it's challenging for those of us who have gone through all this work. It's like we... we 
I believe, and from my experience has been the case, I can't go back. It's like ignorance is no longer possible when you know too much or know more, not know too much, but know more. Like when I know that I have a responsibility for every interaction I'm in, it's hard to blame other people for everything because I know I'm participating in that. It's also a place where I know that judgment doesn't work, period, because it is a destructive force in life that I tend to find myself not judging as much because I know the pain of that. I also know what forgiveness is brought for to help with that. So these tools I've learnt and I use, not always as frequently as I should, but I'm aware very clearly for myself that I have skills and tools that, that help me, that help basically give me a chance to be more whole, more loving, more kind, compassionate, and more caring more of the time. Not everybody has that skill set. And dating somebody who doesn't have that skill set isn't fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter how cute they are. And so I'm going to see if I can look back to the beginning because the title changed. So it, I've changed, I've gone away from the title. But so the thing about doing the work for love, okay, I'm, I'm, going to see, I'm going to see if I tie this together in a pretty bow. We'll see what happens. It is the holidays after all. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So I just shuffle some things in here so now I'll get clearer. It's easy to be in a complacent relationship with the, the, any growth, evolution, depth. That's easy. It's boring, but it's easy. If you are like me, and want a relationship that has a lot more depth and expansion and emotional maturity and unfolding and unity and intimacy, connection, depth, heights, all that stuff, it doesn't usually happen by accident. It usually happens because both people are going deeper in who they are. They're learning to take responsibility for their own actions, for their own loving, and fill up their own tanks first to love each other because that's one of the foundational pieces that makes a depth of relationship more possible when you're fully loving yourself first, and so is the other person. That, as I said, puts you in, into a smaller group, a smaller cross-section of the population. But I would say this, it's worth it. So do the work for love, love beyond what you've had before. Do the work to become more transformed so you can love more, be more loving, have more love, and express more love. Okay, that's the title nailed. <laughs> One of the things I recommend, as always, and I was talking to somebody about it today, and she wants to check it out, is my self-love practice. Because as simple as it is in so many ways, it's not always the easiest thing to do. It's so tempting to run um, roughshod over our own emotions. For most of human beings, for most human beings, being um, judgmental against ourselves is the way of life. It's not healthy. And excuse me a second, I ah, hang on one second. Ah, sorry, I didn't have a Kleenex handy. <laughs> so to bring that point to bring that point to bear. I talk about myself love practice for a reason. It's a simple, elegant, and powerful guided meditation, two of them, plus a workbook, that is set up to help you learn to love yourself more using the sound of my voice to do it when you're in the mirror so you don't have to worry about reading something you can transform your life in th I say 30 days because I was talking to a friend of mine this morning about this changing your life usually takes time to in install new habits and habits generally take about a month to change 30 days to undo 30 days to redo now people say it's 21 days 25 days 28 days I say give it a month make it easy 30 days if you practice something for 30 days every day, it becomes more automatic. That's the point of a habit. A habit is something you do without thinking about it. And frankly, it takes about a month of practice, if you do it every day, to install one. So why not install a good one? One that will support you in being more loving for yourself, loving more loving in the world, and more filled up of your own self-love so you can actually be more confident, more comfortable, and more supportive of yourself. That's the side effects. Good ones, aren't they? So my self-love practice I am recommending for that reason. But I also mean it because if you do that, you start to recognize there's more to life than just what you've had. And when you open up to the space of what's possible, your life will actually transform. And so will your relationships. 
I think it was a way of tying this all together. So my my intention with this, as all of my talks, is to leave you with some th food for thought, to inspire you perhaps, and to give you a nudge in the direction, like a little shove, in the direction of where you want to go in your life. If you want to go deeper on that, I invite you to reach out for a conversation with me, and I'll put a link in the comments for that as well, which is a discovery session. Um, I don't do this for my health. Well, actually, I do do it. No, I take it back. I do do these for my health, but I also do it for your health. Um, selfishly, I do these because it keeps me on track by doing this every day. It really helps me stay centered in my own message, my mission, and my work. But I don't do this for myself only. My intention with these is to serve and inspire you, which is why I've got 563 of these out there so far. So speaking of which, to find these in replay form, this is a Facebook Live first, as I mentioned. And I save this to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. I then move these onto YouTube because that's another good platform to have my videos on because they can be searched that way. And if you go to my YouTube channel, which is my name, Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel, please. And you can watch all of the videos under the playlist of messages from the masculine. All 562 plus this one, 563. And at some point, I'm, I'm installing these onto my podcast in the audio format. And that is um, that on iTunes is messages from the masculine. If you subscribe to that, you can download the audios and listen to them when you're driving, riding, exercising, whatever you're doing when you don't want to look at your phone. So I'm trying to provide a service in all these areas. So with that, I think I've given you the links. Oh, your homework. Got to give you homework. Um, this will be a reflection practice, which is simply this. I invite you to, well, besides recommending you get my self-love practice, I'm inviting you to look at your own life and see where you are in terms of your own responsibility. Now, I don't mean this in like, well, I've got to take care of the bills as some responsibility. I don't mean that. I mean your ability to respond to life. Sit with, if you will, how your life has been going for the last, well, since the end of the year, this last year, because we're almost the end of 2018. And where do you see places you could improve? Whether it's more confidence, maybe it's less judgment, maybe it's more self-respect, maybe it's something where you'd rather be doing a different job or something like that, but I'm talking about more internal ones. And see if you, by loving yourself more, they change. Yes, I'm inviting you to get the self-love practice for a reason. You've got homework to do with this. Because for many people, they like to think everything's going fine and they don't even look back at the rest of their lives. But again, as I said in the title, do the work for love. Do the work for loving yourself to make it worthwhile. Okay, I've done tying that together. I think we've got the information out there. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thanks for watching. This is my daily Facebook Live, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which will be what I plan to do tomorrow, yes. 5 p.m. Pacific time, same channel right here. If you haven't watched me live before, make sure you bookmark or not get notified from my broadcast so you know when I go live tomorrow. And uh, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. And again, I'll put the links for the self-love practice and the uh, discovery session in the comments. With that, I thank you for watching as always. Um, do the work. Learn to love more. It's worth the journey. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.